Top 8 Underrated Movies of John Carpenter That Need Recognition We all love to watch horror movies with rapt attention as it thrills us and makes us look over our shoulders. The 21st century has already played home to a number of truly chilling and creative horror movies with the likes of Insidious, Conjuring, and Saw franchises. But when we talk about horror and insane sci-fi horror movies, we can never forget the maestro John Carpenter. He is a genius filmmaker, screenwriter, and composer, and there's pretty much nothing that he couldn't do behind the cameras to bring the cinematic magic for his viewers. He has worked with various movie genres and is credited most commonly for horror, action, and science fiction movies. He brings impressive storytelling intelligence to the script and direction, including sturdy professionalism to the low-budget production. In this video, we have assembled for you eight underrated movies of John Carpenter which you will surely enjoy watching. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. In the Mouth of Madness, 1994 the movie begins with the disappearance of a horror writer named Sutter Kane, whose latest published book tends to drive readers to psychosis. Then comes an insurance fraud investigator named John Trent. With a spread of apparent paranoid schizophrenia fueled by the Kane's novel, we meet Kane's publisher and editor Linda Stiles. She hires John Trent, an insurance fraud investigator, to probe the disappearance which lifts off the movie into a Lovecraftian horror fantasy. The movie is a nightmare fuel that combines psychological horror and creative feature beautifully. The movie moves fast Fast, and it really doesn't have any filler scenes. As with all the Carpenter flicks, the cast is first-rate and the scoring is impressive. The movie has one nightmare sequence after another that will not give you a chance to breathe. The movie explores the fluid idea that reality is a fragile thing, and if sane was to suddenly become insane, all would be lost. Whether you've watched the film many times or have never checked out this film, now's a great time to kick back and immerse yourself. Prince of Darkness, 1987 the movie begins in the crypts, beneath the old church where the sleeper has been waiting for years. It is absolute evil for which Christ came to Earth to warn us of its existence. It is whirling around the giant glass tube like zucchini in a blender, green and amorphous, locked from inside. The priest, played by Donald Pleasance, reveals the secret of the sleeper and enlists a scientist, played by Victor Wong, to help save the planet as the sleeper awakens. The setup for The Prince of Darkness is excellent, and the music composed by John Carpenter and Alan Howarth is a effective. The movie was way ahead of its time, that played with the notions like characters receiving radio transmission from the future via their dreams and the idea of mirrors as the doorway to the next dimension. It's an incredible treat to watch this film which depends on slowly building dread rather than basing the whole movie on jump scares. Once you watch this movie, we're sure that you'll be hungry for more Carpenter flicks. Has a shotgun. White male, 30s, long hair. Mama don't like tattletales. Wearing sunglasses. They Live, 1988. A homeless drifter, Nada Roddy Piper, discovers a conspiracy by non-human aliens who have infiltrated American society to widen the gap between the rich and the poor. With the help of special sunglasses that reveal the aliens' true faces, he notices that both the media and the government have sided with the aliens, and they're slipping subliminal messages meant to keep the population subdued. With this shocking discovery, our hero tries to stop the invasion. Based on the 1963 short story, 8 o'clock in the morning, by Ray Nelson, the movie stars the likes of Roddy Piper, Keith David, and Meg Foster. It's a sci-fi cult classic that successfully stands the test of time. The story builds in a good and consistent way, revealing its secret bit by bit in a well-paced manner. The cinematography complements the film, and the makeup department did a stellar job in creating the memorable look of the ghouls. The cast is effective and has enough cheese to deliver some laugh-out-loud moments. The movie is remembered for the eight-minute fistfight between the two main characters and the bubblegum line Piper delivers in the bank. So let your hair down and follow Roddy Piper's adventures to appreciate the directorial style of John Carpenter. Yeah. 
Ghosts of Mars, 2001. Set in the second half of the 22nd century, we learn that the red planet has been transformed, thus allowing humans to walk on the surface without pressure suits. A ghost train pulls into Christ City with only one passenger on board, a cop. She leads an expedition to a remote mining outpost to take captured criminal Desolation Williams from jail and back to justice. Most of the action is in flashback, as she recites her story before a tribunal in the matriarchal Martian society. Her squad soon finds an entrance created by an ancient Martian civilization, releasing disembodied spirits who possessed humans and turned them into killing machines. When we're looking at the settlement on Mars, the interior sets are quite good, and the miniature effects used to create an armored Martian train came off as a better enterprise. Between all these squalling rock rifts, the army of demon-possessed humans, and the badass characters, the movie never forgets its campy B-movie status and delivers on its chosen level that we really enjoyed. The movie has heavy metal music by Carpenter himself, with bands Buckethead and Anthrax joining in on the jam session. We want to go. Big Trouble in Little China, 1986 Big Trouble in Little China begins at the airport where Jack Burton and Wang Chi wait for Wang's fiance, an immigrant from China. She's abducted by bandits from Chinatown, which sets up the rest of the movie. Wang's girlfriend has green eyes, which is invaluable for the dreaded Lo Pan, played by Jang's Hong, who must draw on the power within those green eyes to restore his youth. While looking for Wang's girlfriend, Jack and Wang head into the Lords of Death territory, a world of Chinese myth where ghosts exist and people can shoot lightning from their hands. John Carpenter himself describes described the movie as an amalgamation of action, adventure, comedy, kung fu, ghost story, and a monster movie. This is definitely one of Kurt Russell's best performances, and he had a blast playing the macho truck driver. Others like Dennis Dunn, Kim Cattrall, and Susie Pei do justice to their roles. It's a perfect American tribute to the Hong Kong sword and sorcery genre. Set mostly in a magical world, it mixes straight He-Man heroics and kung fu action with wonderful weapons, acrobatic stunts, and special effects trickery. This is one of John Carpenter's more appreciated appreciated pictures, which is smartly scripted, action-packed, and well-choreographed. But even with all this good stuff, it still flopped in the box office when it released. It later garnered the cult classic status when it started to appear on television and VHS. <laughs> Starman 1984 the Starman is a ball of glowing light, who has traveled to Earth in response to the invitation from Voyager 2 Space Probe. After the Air Force shoots the spacecraft, Starman lands in rural Wisconsin, becoming the clone of a dead house painter. The visitor was played by Jeff Bridges, while the widow of the house painter was played by Karen Allen. Now the Starman must take a journey towards Arizona to reunite with his spaceship, but the military officials want to kill him. During this whole fiasco, Starman develops a bond beyond friendship with the widow's character. You will have to watch the movie to know what really happens to Starman at the end. An amusing and appealing storyline, plus the winning performance of Jeff Bridges, ensures the domination of this film in the box office. In this cross-country chase, Starman takes gentle and often humorous swipes at our everyday culture. Jeff brings a wondrous childlike sense to the role, while Karen Allen also deserves plaudits for appropriately vulnerable portrayal. Ample credit should go to the director John Carpenter for his fluid storytelling. Technical credits and special visual effects promises a gala time while watching this masterpiece. If you've not watched this film, we highly recommend it. This movie is not exactly underrated, but no one seems to talk about it these days. This is a golden movie. It gives a very unique escapade that every moviegoer must experience. Escape from L.A., 1996 Escape from L.A. is a go-for-broke warfare flick that satirizes the genre at the same time. It's a dark vision of a post-apocalyptic Los Angeles cut off from the mainland by a flooded San Fernando Valley and converted into a prison camp. A theocratic president, played by Cliff Robertson, declares Los Angeles to be sinful and has converted it into a prison camp with containment walls, armed guards, and watchtowers around it. 
The island is controlled by Cuervo Jones. The rebellious daughter of the president stole a doomsday device and lands on Los Angeles Island to join with Cuervo Jones, a Peruvian revolutionary. Snake Plissken, played by Kurt Russell, has 10 hours to get the girl and bring back the instrument. The movie has such manic energy and groomed vision that it leads to some interesting audience reactions. With much humor and high adventure, the movie brilliantly imagines a Dante-esque vision of the City of Angels. The satirical angle of Carpenter tries to say something about freedom, leadership, and celebrity culture. As the years go by, the movie looks better and better because the effects now come off more as vintage. To sum things up, the movie can be entertaining as it carries the archaic beauty of the Snake Plissken franchise. Kurt Russell is amazing as ever, and the film packs a plethora of interesting characters that will keep you entertained till the end. This movie has the best zero fucks given scene in the history of cinema at the end, so you will have to watch the whole movie to truly experience that badass scene. Body Bags, 1993 Body Bags is a horror comedy television movie that features three unconnected stories, starring John Carpenter, Tom Arnold, and Toby Hooper as deranged morgue attendees. A young co-ed named Anne starts a new job at a remote gas station. Soon, she comes face to face with a demented killer who wants to make her his victim. The next segment, Hair, is starred by Stacey Keach as an aging schmuck named Richard, who resorts to drastic measures in an effort to gain back some of his manhood. The third story comes from Toby Hooper, titled The Eye. The story follows a baseball player named Brent, played by Mark Hamill, who gets blinded during a car crash. He meets a surgeon who replaces his eyeball in an experimental surgery. The movie is well-directed and suspenseful. Mark Hamill's wonderfully insane performance, whose eyes were replaced by a sadistic serial killer, is something you must watch to understand why we're recommending this movie to you guys. Carpenter absolutely steals the show in his limited screen time, it's just so much fun watching him. Body Bags is a can't-miss concept, with the three offerings here serving as a fine horror junk food with delightful gore effects.